Morning, guys. We're on Malachi chapter 3, uh, reading from verse 7. From the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. So they've turned aside from the law, from God's commandments. And as we've read in chapter 2, they didn't, uh, they intermarried with foreign wives and they've basically left the Lord. Um, and so once again, there's a rebuke. And the call is to return to me and I'll return to you, it says in verse 7. And so God puts the ball in our court and he says, return to me, come back to me, repent and start to follow me and I will follow you. Because they, they're wondering where God is. And it says the Lord of hosts, but you say, how shall we return? And I find that very sad. Again, like in chapter 2, what have we done wrong? You know, God comes with this rebuke. He says, make yourselves right. And it should be obvious that they've married other um, other wives and they've disobeyed God. And so, yeah, it should be obvious what they're doing wrong. And I think if we know God's word and we're spending time in God's word, we'll understand the laws of God and it should be obvious to us. But it's not always obvious. And it's because people aren't spending time with God. They don't know his word. And so they don't know what to return to. So they say, how shall we return? And so God, again, very specifically says, Will a man rob God, yet you yet you are robbing me? But you say, how have we robbed you in tithes and offerings? And so God very specifically says, you robbed me in tithes and offerings. And there were many laws regarding a tenth and how they should give. And, and there are many reasons God had commanded them to provide for the poor and the widow. And if, if there was nothing in the storehouse of God, how would they do that? All the whole tribe of Levi needed to be um, provided for as the people brought their tithes and they paid their, their taxes and all that sort of thing. And so that money had was going to be used for God's kingdom and now there was nothing. And so they had ultimately robbed God by keeping back what was his in the first place. Um, verse 9 you are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. And so we again, again look at this aspect that there's blessings and cursings. When we follow God's commandments and God's patterns, when our families are in order and our businesses are in order and we're putting things right, there are obvious blessings that come out of that. And the world sees that. And if you disobey God and you do things your own way and you use His resources for your own means, Obvious, obvious curses that, that come from that. Verse 10, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. And this is one of the few cases in scripture where God says we must test him. Um, and ultimately, he's saying, I will always provide. I've given you all these things. It all comes from me. I'm not going to dry up when um, when you start to give. Because the by human nature, we think if we give, we're not going to have enough. Um, but God is saying, put me to the test. And this, we've got to be careful of how we interpret this. Um, because there are scriptures that say, don't test the Lord. Um but the, the principle is don't, don't give to God expecting a whole lot of money back. It's not about what you can give. And, and, and through the giving of the New Testament, the principle is very clear. It's a heart issue. Give joyfully. Don't let your, your right arm see what your left arm is giving. And, and give abundantly. And so as we do that, knowing it is God's in the first place, knowing God gave it to you, knowing God can restore it and increase that, so we're doing it with a joyful heart, not a heart of, in a sense, test and see how much money we can gain, like an investment. And so we've got to be very careful how we um, interpret the scripture. But ultimately, there's amazing blessings that come from walking in God's ways. And and as the, the world looks at the church and sees families in order and, and, and the joy and the love and the peace, um, and the blessings it is to walk in God's ways. They will be attracted to Jesus as they see that. So let's walk in his ways. 
let's not um, give in the sense that we want to return. It's better to give than to receive. So I trust you have a wonderful day. God bless.